focused on her ability to learn. And the thing is, Sarah's not even born yet. Get proper nutrition before it's too late. Call or visit WIC. WIC provides nutrition information, health care referrals, even food. Your child has you, and you have WIC. Mrs. Johnson, good to see you again. Uh, this is Mike. You can trust him. He looks just like you. Plus, two against one is more intimidating when we force someone to sign a loan. And I'll be sucking up to you in order to keep up the illusion. So, here are your low monthly payments and interest rate, as we promised. Here's where they triple. The rest of this stuff, I don't think a lawyer can read this. It protects us. Make sure we get your home when you can't pay us back. Such a lovely house. Yeah. But don't worry. We're going to sell you credit life insurance. You don't really need it, but... It puts lots of cash in our pockets. You look nervous. We better hurry and get you to sign. Or... I'll pretend to ruin your credit with one phone call. Predatory lenders are never this easy to spot. Call us and protect yourself with the facts. Online predators make their way into homes uninvited and unnoticed. Help delete online predators. To learn what you can do to protect your kids' online life, visit cybertipline.com. And we're back, and again, we thank you for staying tuned. We're talking to Donetta uh, Mahaffey on this Falling Dollar book that she wrote that's uh, uh, inspiration to how to utilize the income that you have to the best of your potential and gives you some, some pointers on uh, how to spend money. Um, you know, we were talking about um, this guy that, that, that realized that the job that he had was not sustaining him the way he should be sustained for his family. Now, if, if he was a single man, you think he would have stayed at that job? Well, he probably would have stayed if it was, you know, he was earning enough income to help him to pay his himself. bills, mm -hmm. you know, himself, but he had a family and a daughter in college. Mm. And it was due to illness, you know, and he worked in the, the sales industry. Mm -hmm. So when he returned um, to his job after his illness, well, he didn't have the, all of the accounts he had before mm -hmm. his illness. So that brought his income down, and in order to rebuild his clientele, it would take a certain amount of time. By then, he may have been in bankruptcy. So he said, you know what? Dernetta, I read your book, but now I'm going back and study. So you inspired him to seek out more information that's available. Because, you know, I know you got your information from God, and, and so, but God uses us to put that information. Yes. I, I look, I, I liken that into a person that's working a job and he's not barely making ends meet, and God is uh, directing him to go to a certain place, but he, he, he resists God and says, no, I'm not going to do it. So God gets him fired. In other words, God said, you know, after a while, you're God doing this. God gets him fired. Yeah, God gets him fired. Yeah, I, I know it doesn't sound right, but, 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 but God gets him fired, mm -hmm. and he said, God, you know, how am I going to do this? Well, it's the only way I can get you to where I want to bless you, yes. because if I don't get you fired, then you're going to stay here, and you won't be able to provide for your family. And, and look, it's, we see it all the time. Look right. at the story of Joseph. The story of yes. Joseph is God fired him out of the family and said, got him to, got, got him, got him in slavery. From slavery, he went there. Uh, yes. uh, uh, the butler ha had had to say to him, "Man, I'm gonna remember when we need somebody. I'm gonna tell the king we got somebody that can do a job that nobody right. else can do." And it was a blessing. But but look what Joseph had to go through. Right. It it, it it took him a lot of years to get to where God wanted him to be. But Joseph kept telling. You know, I'm going to be somebody. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be somebody. And his brothers say, you know what? We're going to stop this. We're tired of you talking about what you're going to be. You're going to be over us and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, I but, remember but, the story uh, uh, well. Uh, but but here, here's the thing that we have. We have, uh, at least on the national level, we have a, 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 a high rate of, of poverty and homelessness. Yes. How do we, how, what do we do about the homelessness? The Bible says that we're, the poor you'd have with you always. What do we do? 
to uh, address the needs of the homeless? I, you know, I think about that often. Um, when I'm exiting at certain exits off of the interstate, as I was sharing with you earlier, daily I am seeing, you know, homelessness. I'm seeing where people are, you know, creating homes, you know, walls with fabrics and different things to create some privacy for themselves under the interstates and, you know, different areas. And my heart is filled with compassion. Though it's been said, you know, don't give to people when you see them on the street. You know, just give to the programs and things of that nature. Well, I personally feel it necessary sometimes to do it both ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult being a female and you pass a female on the street and she's telling you her need. You know, there are times when um, I've been approached by a mother with children mm -hmm. and you want to tell me to come to your program at that time where that family, I know they need that right then and I know that the way some of the programs are structured, they have to have a certain amount of money to even get in to sleep for the night. When mm -hmm. the morning comes, they have to leave. leave. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you know I take into consideration whenever I'm giving to someone on the street. Now, the first thing I, I think is most important is to know whether or not a person, as you said earlier, want to be homeless. Right, right. So some people are homeless because of mental illness and some people are homeless maybe because of, of something that they, they just don't want to be discovered because maybe, n not that they dropped out, but maybe th there's some criminal activity as well. So yeah, some they, people they don't want to be tracked. Yeah, they don't want to like be tracked that. at all. Yeah. Right, and people will pretty much, I guess, let someone know how they feel by the way their, you know, their mannerism is because if someone is really hungry, they, they come up to you and they ask. Mm -hmm. um, if they're hungry and you're in a McDonald's and they walk up to you and say, hey, I'm hungry, will you help me get something to eat? Well, how can you not do it? Well, that's, that's, that's the issue that I, I guess in, in, in mission and in evangelism, that the issue is, okay, what is your need? Right now, you say your need is food. Okay, we're gonna yes. we're gonna accommodate. We're gonna feed you. We're not gonna give you the money because that way, uh, you may take the money and avert it and do something else with it. But if if we buy the food for you, and if you eat the food, we know that you are telling the truth. You know. Right, and it's just you know a matter of taking the time to ask that person. You know what is? How may I help you? You right. know the same right. words that we are. Uh, people ask us when we enter a store or when a phone call, you know, and someone say, how may I help you? I think that's one of the things that we should take the time to ask the homeless when they ask for our help is how may I help you? Even if and let them tell us yeah, what's going even on. Even if there's a language barrier, I think yes. they can communicate something, you know, because they, they got signs. And right. some of the signs say, this is what's happening to me. I'll work for food. Uh, just got laid off, yes. um, traveling, and just ran short, and I just need some money oh, to wow. make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an experience mm -hmm. that it, it blew me away. Um, when I was running the radio station that I managed, I was a general manager for 20 years. I was at that station. And i never forget there was a, a new employee that came to work at the station. And they were training for on air and they did well and they became an on air personality. But it was shocking to me to find out that this family was literally sleeping in a car. Yeah. yeah. Now, no one told me. I didn't know anything. I don't know. I can't even remember how I did to find out that this family, including an elderly grandparent, was sleeping in a car. And when I found out about this, um, I didn't say anything to the family, not even to the employee. I went to an apartment uh, owner, and I told them, I said, uh, I, have a, I have a concern as a family that need shelter. They need a home. They need somewhere to, to be. They're sleeping in a car, and I want to know what is it that you're willing to do a workout with me to sure. help me to get this family in this apartment. I'm mm -hmm. willing to pay whatever it costs, you know, get them in here. I just need to know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I got that information. And at the right time, I approached that employee 
and share it with them, you know, that I had become knowledgeable of their situation. And if they didn't mind, I wanted to help them. And, you know, this is not something you owe me back or anything. It's just I won't help you if you're willing to uh, let me, you know, accept let me help it, you. Accept it, accept and it. I mean, of course, tears flowed, and it was like, you know, they just never imagined. Knew how to, no, they didn't imagine mm -hmm. that anyone actually knew, and they never imagined someone cared enough to, you know, do these things. And, and, and I, I think what really touched you is that they never came and told you their situation. Well, people, that's because people have pride. Mm -hmm. Of course, the scripture says pride, you know, goes, goes before, before destruction the yeah. and everything. But um, I think her goal and her quest was if she could earn enough money and then have enough on a paycheck and then you know then but the process is, is challenging because it's one they have to go through a credit check and background check yes then and you have so, to pay for uh, deposits on utilities and all of these things and i was like you know what i know what it what it's going to take but what i'm going to do if you don't mind i just want to get you all in there it's and almost you like can a, maintain from a, there a fast track a fast track to yes. help us get, get rid of all of those problems because as yes. you as you say for for, for people that, that are purchasing homes and everything like that they know they have to go through uh what what a, a whole lot of paperwork and you got to go through this and red tape of that and all of that and so it can it, for, for that person buying a home it could exhaust you imagine going Going through that same kind yes, of problem, just same, getting no apartment. Yes, I mean, it's the like same it, it, it's, it's really overwhelming because what happens is, what if they say, "Oh, guess what? We found one thing that stops you from getting this apartment." Right, it's, and now that takes us back to why do we see so much homelessness? So, unless there are you know more things in place that has a little, that's a little more lenient to allow people an opportunity to be able to get into a place of shelter and giving them, like you say, a fast track opportunity for them to grow into independence. But uh, everyone that we see on the street isn't there because they really want to no, be there. No, there, there are some agencies. Uh, uh, Unity is one of the agencies. I know some other people that work for Unity, and they go, they do the outreach, and they go under the bridges, under the interstate, yes. and they interview people, find out if this is where you really want to be because we can offer you some kind of assistance. And it's up to them to, to take it, and they can track them, get them in uh, apartments, either uh, uh, short term or either long term, That's the key. qualify them. But but you know, yes. that, the, the basic long thing term. is that <laughs> that we, we have to uh, engage people when they're out there. So why are you out here? You know, exactly. You, know, you want to you, this, you want to respect their wishes yeah. first. Yeah. And you don't want to see them in programs where we, they have to just pay to get in for a night and on the street yeah, in the morning. You definitely want to help them with it, like you say, a long term program that will help them back to the road of independence. We got to go, Donetta. And again, it's always a pleasure having you thank on. We got to get you back on. Uh, uh, I love your book, and, and I think more people should read your book. Uh, we say to our, our, our viewers, go to a church of your choice and worship the Lord. We invite you to come on out to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 2710 Phillips Street. Uh, worship time is at 8 a.m. in the morning this Sunday is our Lost Supper. You're welcome to come and be part of that. Bible study is on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Come on out and be blessed. God bless you. It's our, uh, it's our prayer to you. Until the next time, God keep you.